So in this example we have a particle that's moving along the x-axis a model by a certain function and our goal is to understand its average velocity and its instantaneous velocity. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this function into my calculator. It makes it makes it easier to analyze everything. So I put it in y1 as uh, 3x squared minus 4. You don't need to be in parametric mode. You can stay in function mode. Uh, it's just that t becomes an x in our calculator. And so this is the position of our particle. <clears throat> and so if we want to know the position of the particle at t equals 0, well, that's simple. You just plug in plug in 0 for t. Uh, t. So x of 0 is uh, 3 times 0 squared minus 4, which is negative 4. So if we were to draw, I mean, if we were to draw this, to draw this situation up here on the right. So here's a number line, and our particle is moving, uh, and it looks like when t is zero, it's at negative four. So, so it looks like our particle starts here. Particle starts here. And its final position at t equals 4, well, we just plug in 4. <clears throat> and I'm going to go to my, rather than plug in, I'm just going to go to my table here. And it looks like when t is 4, it's at 44. So t equals 4, it's way over here. Clearly this is... A zoomed out number line, but at t equals 4, the particle is here, and so we're not sure what it does in between. <clears throat> we just know it starts here at negative 4 and ends at 40, uh, the position 44. So this question is what is the average velocity of the particle over the time interval 0 to 4? Now, here's where it's useful to actually abandon this one dimensional number line to analyze this particle's motion and go to two, dimo two dimensions and let's have our x-axis be time and our y-axis be the position of the particle because we know when t is zero the particle is at <clears throat> the particle is at negative four so it looks like I gotta go down to the negatives So at t equals 0, it's at negative 4. And then at t equals 4, it's up here at 44. So that's its position. And what we were, you know, we don't know what happens in the in between, but we don't really care because its average velocity, we know, is just going to be the slope of the secant line. And the slope of the secant line is the slope of that line right there. Right where that's my that's my change in y and my change in x is down here. So the the change in x is my change in x is uh, looks like four minus zero. And my change in y is um, now I'm going to use just some notation. It's it's really x of four minus x of zero, right? which we know is equal to 44 minus negative 4. So if we write that all out here, we look at, we have that our average velocity is x of 4 minus x of 0 divided by 4 minus 0 and that is equal to uh, 44 minus negative 4 divided by 4 minus 0 which is 48 over 4, which is 12. Now there are no units, so let's just say units per, um, let's say units per second, even though seconds weren't, weren't the units, just so we remind ourselves that it is a, it is a velocity. <clears throat> 
Now the, the sort of the million dollar question, what is the instantaneous velocity of the particle at t equals 3? So we don't have any tools to get at that answer precisely. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to find, we're going to use the only tool we do have, and that is we have a, a little formula for the average velocity. So to, to try to get at the instantaneous velocity at the particle, uh, of the particle at t equals 3, let's find the average velocity. So this is about equal to the average velocity And let's just pick um, um, a really small time interval. So, like from one, uh, from t goes from three to like three point zero one. Three to three point zero one. So let's do that. So that's going to be x of three point zero one minus x of 3 divided by 3.01 minus 3 and here's what I think I'll use the calculator now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to go to table set and go to your independent variable and make that ask rather than auto and so now when I plug in 3.01 I get 23.18 minus, and then when I plug in 3, I get 23. Divide that by 3.01 minus 3 is 0 0.01. And so if I do this subtraction, I get 18. All right, so it looks like 18. Looks like 18 is a, my instantaneous velocity. So notice, I what I did was kind of a trick. I just I used the slope of the secant line, but I just made the interval really really small so that I, I'm approximating the best that I can the instantaneous velocity. How about at uh, time t equals one? Let's do the same thing. Let's say okay, that's probably about equal to the average velocity. on the interval 1 to 1.01 .01. so that's equal to x of 1.01 .01 minus x of 1 divided by 1 minus 1.01 .01. so back at our calculator x of 1.01 .01 is negative 0.9397 minus x of 1 is negative 1 divided by 0 0.01 and simplifying this gives us six point zero three. So 6.03, let's say again, um, units per second for both of these. So notice the strategy. The strategy I use to get at the instantaneous velocity is actually is going to be very important later to understand what we did. But um, <clears throat> we don't have a formula for the instantaneous velocity, so what we do is we, we find the average velocity on a really tiny uh, time interval around that point.